now we're going to move into lesson 5.5. Now 5.5 can get a little confusing if we don't take the time to stop and read what we're talking about and truly really think about what we're talking about. Okay? So we gotta stop, we have to be willing to read it, and then to think about it before we're gonna be able to work through these math problems. Now, all of this is inside of chapter five, so we know it's gonna involve percentages. And we know that we can't use percentages in our problem, so we know at some point we're gonna to have to either use a fraction or a decimal. I'll try to make sure that I work through both of those as we go through. So first we're going to start by reading the problem itself. Here's an example that I found. It says Andrea and her partner are writing a 12 page science report. They completed 25% of the reported class and 50% of the remaining pages after school. How many pages do Andrea and her partner still have to write? So as we work through this, when I stop and I read it, and I see what it's telling me, but then I have to think about everything I need to know and what exactly it is that I'm looking for in this math problem. So when I look at it, first I need to know, well, how long is the page that I have to write or the report that I have to write? Well, it's 12 pages. I can see that. So I'm writing 12 pages. What other information do I have? Well, I know that we wrote some in class. Well, how much? They completed 25% of the report in class, so I know I'm going to have 25%. What else do I have? And 50%, okay, so I have more. We did it after school, right? So 50% of the remaining pages after school. So I know that we have 50% of what's left because it says remaining. So I had 12 pages, 25% of it was done in school, 50% of what's left after that is done after school, so how much then of it remains? That's what I'm looking for. So let's start with the idea of how long it is with 12 pages. Remember, if I have 25% that I did, I can't use that 25% in my math problem. I either have to change it into a fraction or into a decimal in order to do the math problem. So when I look at the fraction that or percent I'm given, I'm given 25%. So I'm either going to use one-fourth in my math problem, or I'm going to use 0 0.25, 2,500 in my math problem. Well, let's do a quick review on where I got those. So one-fourth came from taking my percent numbers, putting them over 100, which gave me 2,500, and then reducing both of those by 25. I could have reduced by 5. I got five twenties, but then I'd have to reduce again by tw by five, and then I get my one fourth. So I, that's where my one fourth came from. My twenty five hundredths or point two five came from just simply dropping my percent sign, moving my decimal from right to left two times. That gave me point two five. Don't care which one you use. Honestly, in your math problem to solve it, I'm going to do both because some of you are going to prefer fractions, some of you are going to prefer decimals. I'll show you both ways to do it. So when I first go through my first step and I'm thinking about what they're saying, I know I use 25% or one-fourth or 25 hundredths already that have been written in class. So let's start with a fraction. 12 times one-fourth. Well, I can't multiply a whole number by a fraction, so once again I have to put my whole number over one. I'm always going to cross-reduce. Four will go into four once. 4 will go into 12 three times. That leaves me with multiplying across with 3 over 1, which is just my 3. So I know that in class I wrote 3 pages. Do I use my 3 pages for the next problem? Well, that's where the thinking comes in. I don't. What that is saying is that I use 3 pages, and then we'll work with it in just a second. Then I have my 12 over 20, 0.25 or 2500. Now, if you prefer to have 25 hundredths on top and multiplying then by the bottom on 12, once again, multiplication and addition, they can be done in either order because they get the same answer. It's up to you on how you want to stack them. But once I multiply those two together, I do get my three zero zero, but with my two decimal spaces, and I know I need to move my decimal two times, which still gives me my three. So as I think about the three, do I use it in my next step? 
I don't. Because what it says is I started with 12 pages I had to write. We got three pages done in class. That was my 25%. So how much do I have left right now? I have nine pages left right now to still work with. Once I have that, then I look at, well, then after school, we wrote 50%. 50% of what was left. So once again, I can't use that percent in a math problem, so I have to change it into a fraction, or I have to change it into my decimal. When I do, I know that 50% is 1 half, 50 over 100 reduced, I get 1 over 2 or I just drop my percent sign, move my decimal from right to left two times, which gave me 0 0.50, and I dropped that zero off at the end, and I got 0.5. So either way, whichever, if you want to use a fraction, you want to use a decimal, I don't care which one you do, as long as you know how to get to the correct decimal or percent and use it in your math problem. So then once I know I'm going to use one of those, then I'm going to do my math. So I wrote it down both ways because some of you are, once again, prefer your fractions. Some of you are going to prefer your decimals. I'll show you both ways that we can get to the same answer. So I, once again, can't multiply a whole number by a fraction. I put my 9 over 1. Then I multiply across. I end up with 9 over 2. But then I have to convert that. And 9 over 2, divide my numerator by my denominator, gives me 4.5. When I multiply my 9 times my decimal at 0.5, which gives me 45, but that one decimal space tells me to move my decimal point from right to left one time, which still gives me 0.5. So we wrote 5.5 pages after school. And if I wrote 5.5 pages after school, then how many are left to still do on my report? Well, then I still have 4.5 pages left. Now, someone may ask, well, can I put four and a half? Absolutely. Four and a half is the same as 4.5, as long as I make sure that I have the correct number, and I have my label, because these are all story problems. So as we do these, it's important to realize that these steps are vital in math problems. I have to stop what I'm doing and what I'm used to doing I truly have to read what is given to me. And then I have to think about what I'm doing. I'm telling you on standardized tests, you're going to get math problems that are going to try to trick you. And if you do a normal process that some of you uh, enjoy doing, which is called skimming, you're completely lost on what to do. If all I do is skim and I don't stop to think about what I'm doing, I'm going to get stuck. And then as I'm doing these, one of the things that I think about is I'm going to remember I'm using percents in these problems, but I can't use a percent in a math problem. I'm going to change it to a decimal. I'm going to do it as a fraction. If all I do is get stuck on skimming, asking what I'm looking for, and I'm just looking around and looking around and looking around, and I see numbers and I start plugging them in, I'm not going to get the right answer, and I'm going to get really confused on what it's even asking me. But if I stop and think about what's given, I think about what we've been working on for the past two weeks now, then I can be successful in getting to my right answer by going through my proper steps. So let's look at the first one that's inside of our book here then. The first one talks about Super Protein Cereal Bar. Says to the recommended daily amount of protein is about 50 grams. One Super Protein Cereal Bar contains 16% of that amount of protein. If Stefan eats one super protein cereal bar per day, how much protein will he need to get from other resources to meet the recommended daily amount? Use the graphic organizer to help you solve the problem. Now I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not real big on using the graphic organizers on this set of math problems because I feel like sometimes the graphic organizer is more confusing than helpful. If you simply do the math, it's straightforward as long as you remember the steps of the math. But the graphic organizer is one of those that we're, we're going to take the time to look at because it, it does help us think. I want you to see that the thinking process is what's key. Um, I won't expect it on your homework assignment though. I don't need you to write out all the information or use pictures and things when it comes to you doing your homework. So what do I need to find? Well, I know that I'm going to be 
finding certain information. So I put the pencil up there because you're going to write this down. I'm going to have on the board. Once again, if I go too fast, please just pause the video, fill in your book, and then unpause it and continue on. So what I need to know, I need to know I have what 16% of 50 is. And then I need to know how much is left from the original 50 grams that is recommended for me. What information do I use? Well, I know I'm going to use my 16%, but I'm either going to use it as decimal or I'm going to use it as a fraction. And how will I use that information then? Well, once I look at it, of tells me that I'm going to multiply. That's going to be key on this problem. But then it's a two-step problem. Once I find out what 16% of the 50 is, then I'm going to turn around and I'm going to subtract that from the original 50. This here, I don't need you to do with the boxes. But we are going to work through talking about how we get the information over there. So what it's saying basically is that 1% of 50 is going to be the same as 50 over 100. We're talking about half of what we're, we're dealing with. But what I need you to understand is that 16% of 50 and what that equals. So we're going to look at 1 is to 100 as 16 is to 100 as we work through this. It gets a little confusing, and that's why I don't like necessarily like this part of the graphic source. What I want you to remember is how we change 16% into a decimal or a fraction, whichever you prefer to use. So when I change it into a fraction, I keep the digits, the 16, I put it over 100. When I have 16 over 100 then, it says 16 one hundredths of 50. Of, once again, tells me to multiply. And I can't multiply a whole number by a fraction, so I put my 50 over 1, and then I'm going to multiply across. Now, please don't think that when I see these two fractions and I'm trying to figure out what's at the bottom or something, that I, I'm doing a divide the loop. That's not what this problem is. Okay? This is a straightforward multiplication of fractions. How do I multiply fractions? I multiply across. When I multiply across, I get 800 over 100. And that changes just into 8, because those zeros cancel out. I end up with 8 over 1, which is 8 grams. Now, if you want to cross-reduce, you'd have 50, 100. 50 goes into 50 once. 50 goes into 100 twice. 16 over 2 is also the same as 8, because it's division, and 16 divided by 2 is 8. Well, what if you want to use the uh, decimal instead? Well, if I want to use the decimal instead, then I drop the percent sign, move my decimal from right to left two times, and I have 0.16 or 16 hundredths. So I have to go back to my math problem of 50 of tells me to multiply. So I would multiply 16 hundredths times 50, and when I stack them and multiply, I end up with 800, but I have two decimal spaces. And once I move that two decimal spaces, I have 8.00 which is also telling me, yes, indeed, it is 8 grams. So is that my final answer? It's not, is it? Because I know that I have 50 grams, and 16% of that is 8 grams, so then I go through my final steps of subtracting. And 50 minus 8 tells me that I still need 42 grams of protein. So going through all of these, it's going to be that we stop and we read it don't skim it. Read it so you truly understand what's being asked and think about it before you start working on it. So when I look at this one, it says that Lee saved 65% of the money that she needs to buy a pair of jeans that cost $24. Well, how much money does Lee have? And how much mo more money does she need to buy the jeans? So this one takes that fraction bar out and it just gives you the information that you're looking for. The rest of the problems, once again, when you get to your work, I don't need you to write out all this information. This is just to help us see what we should be asking ourselves with that reading voice and that thinking voice, not that distracting voice. So what do I need to find from this information? Well, I need to know that I'm finding 65% of $24. I also need to know how much she still needs because the 65% is what she has saved. So how much does she still need before she can go in that store and buy those blue jeans? 
the information I'm going to use is 65% of a decimal, or I'm going to use 65% as a fraction. And I'm going to use it by, once again, multiplying because it tells me of, and then once I have that answer, I'm going to subtract it from the original to see what I still need to save. So we'll work you through it. 65% as a fraction. Once again, I'm going to put my 65 over 100. When I have 65 over 100, well, I'm multiplying by 24. Got to put 24 over 1, don't I? So once I do that, I multiply. Once again, handy dandy calculators are going to make these much easier. I end up with 1560, 1560 over 100. That is a division problem, so when I divide those, I get to move my decimal. So we can put it inside the calculator, 1560 divided by 100. We can put it inside a division box, tough number goes inside the division box. Or the shortcut that I taught you several weeks ago is I'm dividing, so I'm going to move my decimal to the left. My zeros tell me how many times to move my decimal, and there isn't a decimal, so I'm going to put it at the end of the number and I want to move it two times. So dividing makes it smaller. I go left, move it two times, I get $15.60. Well, if I'm going to use my decimal point then, I look at my decimal point, my percent, I drop my percent sign, I move my decimal from right to left two times, and I get 0.65 or 6,500. When I stack those, once again, handy dandy calculators will make my life a little easier, or I can do it the long way and show every single step, I still end up with 1560. Two decimal spaces in my answer, move my decimal from right to left two times, and I get $15.60. Either way, I know that she has saved $15.60 because it is 65% of the $24. But I'm not done, am I? Because I still need to find out what it she still needs in order to get those blue jeans from the store. So I start out with $24. I have to subtract that to figure out what she has left. Once I borrow through, then my subtraction ends up showing me that I still need to save $8.40. So when I think about the problem and I read the problem, I realize there are two answers. And without both answers, I'm not going to get a very good grade. So make sure you provide both answers. So let's look at a couple more that are in our book. On the share and show questions, we have a first question, which is about volcanoes. A geologist visits 40 volcanoes in Alaska and California. 15% of the volcanoes are in California. How many does the geologist visit in California and how many in Alaska? First draw, bar model. Well, let's think through the problem. I know that I'm going to read everything that it tells me, think about what I need and what I don't need. Well, there are 40 volcanoes. That's important to know because that's how many I'm starting out with. 15% of them are in California. That's good to know because the amount is only within two different states that I'm going to go visit. So if 15% are in California, then I should be able to find the ones in Alaska also. I'm not going to make you draw the bar model though. Don't feel that that's necessary and it really gets kind of confusing for several of the students. So just ignore that aspect. I want to see your work and mathematically for it to be sound. So when I look at what I'm doing, I have 15% of 40. Well, that could be 0.15. Drop my decimal or my percent. Move my decimal from right to left two times. So I have 0.15 times 40, which would give me 6. Or I could take my 15 over 100 and get 15 hundreds times 40 over 1. 600 over 100 then, when I reduce it, does show me 6 as well. So I know either way that I do the math, I have 6 different volcanoes where? Well, we said that 15% of the volcanoes were in California, so 6 of them are in California. Well then, if I have 6 in California, and there were 40 to start with, 40 minus 6 gives me my 34. So I know that I have 6 that are in California, because that was 15% of the 40, and therefore there are 40 different volcanoes in Alaska that the geologist is going to visit. Alright, let's look about Kevin. 
It says Kevin is hiking on a trail that is 4.2 miles long. So far, he has hiked 80% of the total distance. How many more miles does Kevin have to hike in order to complete the trail? Now this is the first one that's given us a decimal point to use in these type of problems with our percent. So how do I do that? I do it the exact same way. It doesn't matter if it's a whole number. It doesn't matter if it's a decimal. It doesn't matter if it's a mixed number. I still go to do the same math every single time. So I know I'm dealing with 80%. How do I change it? I drop the percent sign, move the decimal from right to left two times, which gives me 0.8. Or if I prefer the fractions, I keep my numbers and I put it over 100. Once I have that, then I'm going to do the math. What is 8 tenths of 4.2 miles? When I multiply those together, I get 3.36. Or if I do the fractions, then I have 80 over 100 times 4.2 over 1. I would change those to where I have 42 over 10 to make my math a little bit easier to do. Then when I have 80 times 42, I get 3,360. And 100 times 10 gives me 1,000. And when I divide those, I still get 3.360. Dropping off that zero, of course, at the end of my decimal number. So I know that he has gone 3.36 miles. He has a total of 4.2 miles to go. How much further does he need to go? That's where I'm going to subtract. I fill in my information. I borrow. When I subtract, I know that I have 84 hundredths or 0.84 miles left. Here's the thing. Once again, I don't mind if you use fractions. I don't mind if you use decimals. However, if my original problem starts as a decimal, my answer also needs to end in a decimal. If my original problem would start as a fraction, I would need to end in a fraction or a mixed number. All right, so let's look at what this one's telling us. This one, I'm telling you, is a little tricky. You have to think about it. So Jordan takes 50% of the cherries from a bowl. Then May takes 50% of the remaining cherries. Finally, Greg takes 50% of the remaining cherries. There are three cherries left. How many cherries were in the bowl before Jordan arrived? All right, so we know that in the original amount, that 50% of them were taken by Jordan. Well, of that, or how many is now left, that 50% of those were taken by Mel. And then of that, what's now left, 50% of that was taken by Greg. Well, still doesn't tell me what I'm doing yet. Um, what else? Oh, now I'm left with three. So I have three left. I had this big amount, 50% of it, 50% of it. 50. Well, let's look at changing those into fractions and see if that helps us think a little clearer. Of my original amount, half of that was Jordan's. And then what was left, half of that was Mel, or I guess it's May in it. I put Mel. Half of that is Greg's. I know I'm left with three. So it does really get really confusing on what it's asking us to do. So if we think about it. So we've talked about finding half of something, which was dividing by two. What if I went backwards on this problem? Instead of dividing by two, because I have a missing number that I'm finding half of, instead if I take and multiply a number that I do have by two, would that get me to my same answer? So if I have three left, and I know that with what's left, that Greg has the same amount because he took half of what was there and left three, and at half of three, I'd have three and three, wouldn't I? So what if I multiplied that by two? So if I had three left and Greg had three, so three times two would give me, I actually had six. So from this point, there would have been six in my bowl, Greg got half of them, which was three. He left me with three. That mathematically works, all right? So let's go apply that to the previous step. If I'm left with six, and Mel had half of what was in the bowl, well, I'm left with six, which is half. Mel had it, so Mel would also have to have six. Or if I take six and I multiply by two, that would tell me how many is in my bowl. So that says I would have 12. 
So let's check that. What is half of 12? Well, 12 divided by 2 is 6. That works. So I had 6 left. Half of 6, 6 divided by 2 is 3, and I'm left with 3. That does work. So then that means that Jordan would also have 12. So if I took 12 and I multiply it by 2, that would give me my original amount. Because 12 and 12 makes 24, or 12 times 2 gives me my original 24. So how many cherries did I have to begin with? I had 24 cherries to begin with. That was a tricky problem. But that is the type of problem that you will probably see on the I-step test just to make sure that you understand and you can think logically through the math process. It wasn't like any other problem that we had done. This is difficult if you don't read it. If you read it and you think about it, then it's usually pretty easy to do. It's just a lot of work, and I agree with that. That's why you don't have as many problems to do in homework as you do on previous nights. Story problems can always be tricky if we don't read them. That's why we have to stop. We have to read the problem instead of just looking for numbers and keywords that might jump out at us. And then we have to think about what is being asked. And when I think about what is being asked, I have to think about all the different answers that it's asking for. Sometimes, and on all of these cases, there was more than one answer. There were two. So be sure that you're stopping, you're reading, and you're thinking about what's being asked. If there are any of them that do confuse you, please come back and ask, and I'm more than happy to help. If not, look at the board for your assignment.